sisters. Welcome. Uh, I had a little bit of the flu last week, so I was out. Uh, winter has re-exerted itself upon the Midwest here, so. But we come now at this time and in this way to continue our prior discussion and examination of, uh, you know, past history, contemporary behaviors, and what if. So to begin our readings, let's turn to our Hebrew Bibles, uh, Psalms 33, Psalm 33, verses 1 through 11. Rejoice in God, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise God with the lyre. Make melody to God with the harp of ten strings. Sing to God a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of God is upright, and all God's work is done in faithfulness. God loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of God. By the word of God the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of God's mouth. God gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. God put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear God. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of God. For God spoke and it came to be. God commanded and it stood firm. God brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. God frustrates the plans of the people. The counsel of God stands forever. The thoughts of God's heart to all generations. Now let's turn to our uh, New Testament reading, which is uh, Romans. We'll turn to Romans 8, 18 through 28. I know this may sound a little popular, but it's also very appropriate for what we're looking at today. Romans 8, 18 through 28. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage and decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our body. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what is not, what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. Here are the words of God in the book of Romans. Okay. What if it all goes right?
Now, this is actually the title of a book written by men, the author, What If It All Goes Right? Creating a New World of Peace, Prosperity, and Possibility. <clears throat> I think I've mentioned this book before in the past, but today I'm paying special attention to it because it has a direct correlation to the historical and contemporary uh, values and belief of European Christians and of how the manifestation of self-sabotaging behavior has become a reality in those circles. But it is also very appropriate for uh, each of us individually for that same reason. We are culturally influenced by the policies, history, and polity of the doctrine of Christian discovery, which has manifested in a culture of attitude and beliefs which sabotage our own success and well-being uh, through our own creation. And so, what if? If there's one thing Native Americans are really, really good at, it's imagination and creativity. This is exemplified in the artwork created by many American Indians, by the ability to endure and to fulfill or do the work that is needed to manifest vision despite all obstacles, all barriers, to have the patience, the strength, and the courage to continue forward when everyone says it's impossible. This is the way that I was taught, the way I was led to believe. It's the culture in which I live. And 20 years later, the spiritual communities which Spirit guided me to create are still running. Despite all the obstacles, all the naysayers, rules and regulations, culture of opposition, entrenched racism against American Indians, and, uh, and being shot at repeatedly for trying to do it. So, I'm not trying to actually doing. And so I look at uh, how many people are their own worst enemies through negative thoughts, negative reinforcing behaviors, making our lives more difficult than they need to be. And the reason for this is because, quite simply, self-doubt. People doubt that they deserve to be happy, to be whole, to be content. And others who are ambitious, greedy, power hungry, believe that it's okay to do whatever they want to do to get what they want, even at the expense of others. But the reality is, God believes and desires for us to live good lives being of good service to God, to honoring the sacredness of our Creator in all creation, treating all people with dignity and respect. And in so doing, we also too are treated that way. So, what does it take to change this old tapes, old teachings, old learnings that are over here that have caused us to be our own worst enemies? To uh, reinforce our, an inability to develop and maintain healthy functional relationships. To believe in the abundance that God has for us, for all people. I guess I could go on for quite a while, but I know we only have a certain amount of time here today. So I'm going to move forward into creating that new reality. We do create our reality. Mindy explains in here, as she looks at not only uh, from her own thoughts, she, she looks at the science 
aspect of this and the religious aspect of this, the spiritual aspect of it. And she breaks it down, ironically, in conjunction with uh, what I have known, what I know as a, as a, as a therapist, uh, to be you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist. And as a therapist, I know that in order for someone to manifest a change in their life, in their reality, they have three ways of doing that. You either have to change your thoughts, your feelings, or your actions. And she has brought this together in herself. And you look at page 74 of her book, there's a little, and I doubt that you can see it, but you'll, you'll get it, you'll, you'll figure it out. And she calls it the what if circle. And at the top, she adds another one. It's called imagination. Imagination is the key to allowing us to change our reality. Feeding our imagination, nurturing our imaginations, allows us to be able to change our thoughts, change our feelings, change our actions, and in so doing, change our reality. We create, or we limit cooperation among others, manifestation of abundance and prosperity, which I am not a prosperity theologian, don't support that in any way, shape, or form. And the reality is that if we're struggling with money, it's not because God doesn't want us to have enough to, to live well. It's because we are setting ourselves up to limit our access to resources. And so, in addition to imagination, she includes wisdom, because it takes wisdom to be able to acknowledge that we have character defects, we have flaws, which impede our ability to live good, good lives in good service to our Creator, our family, and all of creation. We have to take a hard look at those and do what we need to do to change that behaviors and thoughts and feelings. I've met many people who, especially here in Oklahoma, who, where there is a culture of what's called survive. People around here are not focused, many people around here, I won't say everyone, but many people around here are focused on survival mode, of just getting by, instead of thriving. Well, American Indians, or Native Americans in our Indian religious traditions, we tend to lean more towards creating thought patterns that reinforce thriving and not just surviving. And in so doing, we think about others. Uh, you know, take the Suquamish up in Northwest uh, United States. The most honored people in their, in their nation, the most revered people in their nation are not those who accumulate wealth and possessions, but those who give away joyfully and abundantly. Those who use their resources to help others. They are the honored and revered peoples. It is stands in stark contrast to the American way of life where the accumulation of wealth and possessions is how people are identified as being successful. So in that context, of being able to be a better service makes people more honored in God's eyes than looking out for yourself. Rugged individualism, as it were. And so when we shift that thought pattern right there, we start that road of actually walk, living in harmony, walking in harmony with our Creator's will and intention for each and every one of us. And that's going to be a challenging pill for many to swallow. <coughs> But it is a possibility, because what if, what if we do? What if everybody does make that choice? And so it's through these things that we look 
And if we back up a little bit, we'll get a little better insight on this as to why and why not. Mindy calls it the creative cycle. Creative cycle, thoughts, feelings, actions, reality. Creative cycle. Through imagination and creativity, doors are thrown wide open. And it can happen in little ways, in big ways. So it's up to you to what kind of reality you want to create because if there's one thing that she reiterates and I totally 100% back up from my own life experience, what we put out to creation as our hopes, our desires, our real wants, the universe moves to support it. So if we're doing negative self-talk, for example, if you tell somebody, oh, you know, I think I could go to school and get that degree I always wanted, and then people start going, yeah, but it's going to take a lot of time, it's going to take a lot of money, and what about your family, and how are you, blah, blah, that's negative self-talk. The negative self-talk comes in the fact that we share this vision, this dream of ours with people. We suck the life out of joy. We suck the life out of success, out of well-being. Because they lack a willingness to change, a willingness to trust in the power greater than themselves. So what's wrong with us that we are sharing those visions and those dreams and those what-ifs with people who we know are going to suck the life out of it. And that's the first place to start. Do you really want to hang out with people who are downers? Just saying. Or do you want to hang out with possibility things? And I'm going to insult some people right now because I'm going to tell you a long time ago Unfortunately, <laughs> when I was in high school, I took an advanced humanities class, and I went to, because my dad was in the service, and I did my last two years of high school at a private international school in Athens, Greece, and I was accepted into an advanced humanities class my senior year. The very first thing I learned, the very first class that we had, taught us this phrase, small minds gossip, big minds discuss ideas. And in my 40 years of experience since then, I can pretty much break everybody down into one of those two categories, one or the other, right or wrong, good or bad. It's pretty easy to see the difference. So, which one are you? And are you really glad you're there? Or do you want to be somewhere else? And so, when we do self-doubt, when we think that perhaps we don't deserve it or we can't make it happen, that's because we lack trust in God to support it in doing it. So the first thing we need to do is pray for God to give us the courage and the strength to trust. And from there, what if we trust God? What if we believe we deserve what God is guiding for us to achieve? What if it all goes right? Well, Mindy points out how we managed to cut our own legs out from under us. On page 38 and 39, she points out our two most negative self-sabotaging thoughts and behaviors. She calls them havoc wreaking, havoc wreaking habits. And they're pretty cool. And the first one is work. How many of us worry about every little thing? that we have absolutely no control over. Worry about if it's going to be too hot or too cold or 
worrying about if you're going to have trouble with your car or going to work. Worry, worry, worry. The second is preparing for the worst. Now, there is that old adage, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Well, when you prepare for the worst, a lot of times that's what you manifest. So, what if we prepared for the best? What if we let go of our worry and our need to protect ourselves against every possibility and embraced joy and fun in our lives. And that shocks a lot of people around here when you say stuff like that because, you know, that whole sweat of the brow, I gotta suffer and die miserably. Well, hey, been there, done that. Have fun with that. So, uh, for me, it's a different world. Remember that God wants us to be possibility thinkers. God wants us to be able to be one of those honored people who inspires others to want to be like us through being of good service to our Creator and to all of creation, treating all people with dignity and respect, welcoming everyone without judgment, without reservation. It's not about right or wrong, good or bad. It is about what is. And what is comes down to a very simple thing. What if? What if you went and bought this book? What if you started a what if group? What if your world became what you desired for it to be in a good way? What if it all goes right? We have the opportunity to inspire others to let go of that old browbeating behaviors which we learned from generations past, honoring them for what they did, knowing that we have a better way that works better for us. What if we took parenting classes? What if we did what we need to do to get a better job. What if we started caring about our neighbors? What if we treated all people with dignity and respect? What if it all goes wrong? Your focus creates your reality. I'm going to say that again. Your focus creates your reality. Where you put your thoughts, your attention, your feelings, what you feed becomes your reality because that's what creation is going to give you. You have the choice. You have the power to change your reality. What if you had a willingness trust in God, treat all people with dignity and respect, and in so doing, inspire others to want to be like you through demonstrations of your compassion, your caring, and your trust in God. What if it all goes right? Walking beauty. Walking.